Hello everybody. So I'm a little bit late today, um, or three minutes late. I was actually climbing up 10 flight of stairs to get back to my Airbnb that I rented. <laughs> I'm living right now in an 1800 um, era house, which doesn't include an elevator, which means that I climb up 10 flight of stairs to get to my place. Uh, but it's sort of fun because the view I get is awesome. Hey, Carolyn. Um, so yes, the sweaty, sticky Lydia is because I've been climbing some stairs. Um, but thanks guys for joining me and hello from Lisbon, Portugal. Um, I am here for the next month or so, which has been fun. Uh, I've been really enjoying actually having a bit of change uh, from the tropics to the city which is always awesome and eating tons of Portuguese tarts and the pastries and the croissants are so yummy here that I'm sure I'll be gaining about 10 pounds by the time I leave this place. Um, but I wanted to say hello and uh, tell you a little bit about uh, my trip here. It's only been a week, really, uh, and also let you know a little bit about um, uh, an upcoming webinar I'm having, which is about this topic, the five steps of uh, mindset preparation uh, from being an employee to an entrepreneur mindset, which it doesn't matter if you categorize yourself as a freelancer or you want to be a freelancer or a consultant or just really independently making a living uh, on your own. Either way, uh, whether it's an entrepreneur venture or a freelance career uh, you're going after, uh, definitely uh, the mindset preparation is so key uh, to doing all the things that you want to do um, that's alternative to working the nine to five. <laughs> Carolyn says, more of me to love. Yes, more sweaty good mess for me to love. Um, well, before I, I start talking about that, um, maybe I'll show you a view of why I climbed 10 flights of stairs. Let's see if I can bring my camera with me and you can see the outside of my view of why it might be worth it to climb 10 things of stairs. Let me open this. Let's see if I can. All right, you can probably hear a bit of construction. Um, but this is my view, which is kind of awesome. There's a bit of construction happening in the square, but I do get a nice um, sea view, which is lovely. And it's, I'm in a neighborhood called Alfama, uh, which is sort of in the middle of town. It's quite a lot of walking I've been doing, but um, I've been loving being up in the top floor. It is a bit of a trek to get up, but it's really worth it. Um, and as I said, on these 1800 style homes, there really is no elevator for anything. But I love waking up to all this sunshine and amazingness. Uh, it really is a really beautiful place. All right, let me get back down the stairs. So it'll be less noisy, but I thought I'll show you the view. Uh, there we go. All right, lock that door. All right, so that's me. Um, I'll probably be here for another week and then I'm going to be heading to Cascache, which is a nice beach coastline town uh, where I'll be parking my butt for the next month. So you'll see more beachy stuff uh, when I stream from there. Hopefully my my phone will be fine. All right. So uh, let's talk about the upcoming webinar I'm having. And also I'm going to talk a little bit about this topic today, but I won't uh, over teach you anything so that you'll actually attend the webinar. We'll get into more details about it. Uh, you'll see the link that I posted on the post here on the subject line. But uh, just in case, here's the link again. Uh, if you go to screw the screw the cubicle dot com forward slash career dash transition dash webinar, uh, you'll be able to sign up for my upcoming webinar that's happening uh, on September the 7th at 4 p.m. Uh, Lisbon time. And then I'll tell you the Eastern time uh, time zone, same day in the morning. Um, if you click on that link uh, above this video, which is on the post or just get to the link uh, from the one that I just posted on the screen here. Um, either way, there will be a replay, but really what I'm going to walk you through. So if you guys have ever attended a webinar I've ran before, you know, I talk a lot about, you know, like financial preparation, uh, side hustling, you know, experimenting with your skill sets and all that stuff that that I think are good things to get ready while you're still in a full time job. Uh, however, this webinar is going to talk a lot about the mental preparation and all the things that you need to prepare emotionally uh, and mentally in order for you to get good with change. Um, you know, one of the things that I really realized when it comes to, you know, uh, that strategic approach of leaving a job or starting a side hustle or starting a business um, really is not just all about the practical steps, right? The plan and the goals that you plan out for yourself. A lot of it is due to whether you believe you can do it or not uh, and how much um, of those small incremental bite sized steps that you're preparing yourself for uh, and not over um, almost like, you know, I know a lot of us get very 
very disappointed when we we take too big of a step, for example, uh, or and look at other people and envision that we should be there by now. Uh, that really stumps our growth and our belief in ourselves. So a lot of what we're going to be, uh, well, I'll be teaching you at the webinar is going to be all about that emotional preparation and how to also get the support that you need during change. Um, change is hard for most of us. You know, change is not easy. And even if we have the best plan ever in front of us, the, the internal desire to do it and that, you know, preparation that we have to do emotionally to actually do the things that we have to do practically really starts from the mindset. So we're going to be talking all about that, uh, so that the root of some of your, um, resistance sometimes with change, um, your difficulty going through change, uh, hopefully will be, uh, if not eradicated, at least softened, uh, in the blow of change during that webinar. So please sign up and I would love to, uh, discuss more about that mindset preparation for you, uh, in the webinar. And we'll have a replay out. We'll have a workbook, a bit of a checklist workbook for you to sort of work through, uh, as you watch the training. Um, and I think that'll be really, really helpful for you. Uh, to get you sort of started on even um, before the webinar, I've also uh, just released and published a new video blog post that you may be interested to watch before coming into the webinar. Um, Let's see if I can put up the link here. All right, there it is here. So um, I literally just pressed published five minutes ago. So that's a brand new video blog I filmed before I came to Lisbon from Bangkok. Uh, and if you, again, go to the top of the post, there's a link there as well as there's a link on the screen. Uh, screw the cubicle.com forward slash mentally slash prepare. Uh, sorry hyphen, prepare, hyphen, your escape. Uh, there you go. <laughs> you can just click on the live link actually just above the video and that might be easier for you. Uh, this sort of gives you a bit of an introduction about that mental preparation shift um, and then it hopefully will get you excited to attend the webinar with me. But the one of the steps that I'm going to talk about today, uh, which I sort of alluded to in the beginning of this uh, stream, is uh, this, you know, looking at other people and then expecting yourself to be there, which is sometimes, you know, uh, it doesn't help with our case of change, right? Uh, of that high expectation and that sort of like, you know, instant gratification attitude that we sometimes have in the day and age that we, we live in. And we forget that actually with change and doing anything new takes a bit of time. Uh, it takes a lot of um, effort and focus on our, on our part. And we have to learn to be a little bit more gentle <laughs> in the way that we, uh, you know, go through that change. Um, and this is sort of a conversation I had with another uh, digital nomad when I arrived in Lisbon, actually, about, you know, um, we've been around the digital nomad scene for the last four years. And, and one of the things that, that I was talking to this person about uh, was this, this, this awareness that, you know, as you guys know, I usually am in Bali. I see a lot of digital nomad wannabes and, you know, up and coming entrepreneurs and whatnot coming through Bali and wherever I've been traveling. And a lot of them gave themselves, let's say, six months to get something started. Right. And they moved to a place like Bali to make it easier for them financially. But the, the, the truth of the matter, and this is the reality check, is that from living in Bali for four years, I have realized that. 90% of people that come there end up leaving and going back home and getting a job. Now, why is that? Um, and I'm not saying this to discourage you in any way. I'm not saying this to uh, put a damper in your dreams. I, I want to infuse some reality checks. And this is what I've noticed that's happening with sort of new entrepreneurs or new uh, digital nomads sort of wanting to make this lifestyle permanent. Um, they, you know, when you move to a new country, for example, especially a place like Bali, it's very tempting to have a vacation and a holiday every single day of the week, right? Uh, and I absolutely believe that sabbaticals and time off, especially if you've just quit your job uh, or starting something new, you need a break from your routine. You do need to take a holiday, uh, but it's also a reality that you need to put uh, some work into building a business. Um, and something that I really realized from talking to a lot of people that come through Bali and end up going home, for example, to get a job because they couldn't sort of start something while they were away is because they were spending 80% of their time vacationing uh, and not, and you know, Amanda, you're here on this live stream. I mean, you're building also a location independent business. You have children, um, as you can also probably uh, testify to this, that it takes 
work to build something, right? Which requires us to actually financially save up money so that we can make that change and not rely on income right away, which is normal. Uh, but the second thing is you've got to be around people that can help you with building a business. Hence, the digital nomad communities are great. But also, you need to actually self-discipline yourself to work every single day to get to where you need to go. Um, and there's this sort of like, like I said, this instant gratification attitude that we sort of have now that is like, oh, I should have been there by now. You know, I'm so, I have 10 years of experience and, you know, a lot of people say that to me, they're 40 or they're 50 or sometimes they're 30, whatever age you are, they're like, you know, I've been a professional for a decade. You know, I should be making the same amount of money I used to make. And the reality check is you're not. You're starting off as a beginner, you know, and it, no one cares uh, about what you've done in the past. When you start a new business, when you start a new freelance career, you're starting from new. You are an intern in your new business. And we have to start doing the dirt Dirty work, right? The 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 groundwork that isn't sexy, that isn't um, you know glamorous, and and it's hard work, you know, in the beginning. And I think reserving that time, whether or not you've becoming a digital nomad right now in a new country, or even starting a side hustle as you you know work full time, you've got to put in the time. Um, it's like going to a job, and you have to show up, and you show up consistently every single week. Um, Amanda, you're saying, yeah, more more hours initially than your past teaching gig for sure. Um, and yeah, the, the color block, yeah, I shared a color block schedule, uh, that helped you get some shit done, right, Amanda, which is great. Yes, time blocking is your friend. Uh, but the real message here is you got to put in the work, right? And that's why that free webinar I'm mentioning that hopefully you'll sign up for above this video for next week uh, is going to talk a lot about that, you know, that that not only the mental preparation, but really the practical things you have to do while you're transitioning from a full time job to a side hustle or doing that in conjunction with a full time job. Um, so the, the people that I see end up leaving Bali, for example, or any digital nomad communities and going back home to get a job are usually the people that didn't put in the time to create something or they're afraid to try something new. Um, I don't know how many times I've had this conversation with sort of new entrepreneurs that sort of say, well, I refuse to do this thing that I could have been hired to do because it's not really my forever job or it's not really my passion. Um, and here's the thing. I wish we can all just go straight to passion and do everything we love right away. But sometimes that's not the case for a lot of us. Um, one is because we don't know what our passions are. So actually, we do have to experiment with sort of our skill set. So if you have an inkling, uh, inclination to try out writing or you're like, you know, I think I could do some social media management for people instead of going out there and getting a client that's paying right away. And because you don't know, you don't know if you know what you're doing just yet, you could volunteer your time. You could actually approach a business owner or friend that has a business and go, hey, can I do this for you for free and come up with a plan for you just as practice for myself, but I won't charge you anything to do it. And that's one way of experimenting with your, with your skills. And that means to eat a little bit of humble pie in the beginning to sort of think about what can you do? Because as I said, your previous resume no longer, uh, you know, exists in the entrepreneurship world, exists for you. You know what you've done. You can value yourself according to your resume. But in terms for other people, like they don't care about what you've done in your resume. They care about what you can do for them today. Uh, and so part of that is whatever age you are, however many years of experience you think you have in your uh, corporate resume, you are starting over. So if you think about all the years that you've done to climb the corporate ladder, to get a promotion, to get that management position, that director position, that raise, that wasn't overnight. We don't jump from a junior position to CEO, right? Uh, in the real world. And that notion exists again for entrepreneurship. We have to start from uh, the bottom in a way, you know, and do the unsexy work that is uh, very relevant to our success and build slowly. Hence why that that um, slow climb almost to your success is much better, right? Oh, am I still here? I've seen something uh, sort of went lagging. Anyway, if you can say hello to me on the chat box and say I'm still alive. That would be great. So I know I'm not talking to myself, uh, but something sort of seemed to glitch up anyway. Um, so yeah, so, so that, that high expectations, I think we need to bring it back down a little bit and be realistic about the things that we want to achieve uh, and know that, Hey, building a business takes time and we just have to prepare our environment and our attitude in order uh, to have that, that change happen and actually really, really do the work. So um Hopefully, I'm still on. I don't see anyone saying anything on the chat box. So, oh, I'm back. Yay. Okay. Thanks, Carolyn. 
Um, but I would love to know, and if you guys are watching this live stream, like, what do you think has been sort of one of your beliefs about,、um, you know, going from employee to entrepreneur that you don't believe you can achieve or become in order to do that? I would sort of love to know that because every time I ask these questions, it's really giving me some clues about what to include in my webinar training that's upcoming,、uh, so I can answer your question about that. Um, but this video is really about the reality check of what to expect.、Um, I hope that、um, the reality check in the webinar will actually outline what to expect, so that you're not、uh, be- feeling bad about things. You know, you're not feeling that you're behind in any way.、Um, I know a lot of people when they start this journey, they always feel、um, behind somebody else, and because we're always comparing ourselves to other people. And the truth of the matter is.、Um, Everyone started where you are. Everyone had to put in the same amount of hard work, and very unlikely the people that you see having success in their entrepreneurship ventures or freelance careers have been sort of given to them on a silver platter. Everybody has worked really hard, no matter what they advertise about how easy it is. You know, six figures in six months, whatever sort of BS advertising there is nowadays, it's not true. <laughs> people work very, very hard to get to where they are. Very likely, you'll be working more than you ever did in a corporate job. Now, what are the rewards? The rewards are definitely your freedom of choice of how you spend your time and what you work on,、uh, where you work from. Obviously, one of the things that I strive for.、Um, but having that freedom comes with a cost, and there's an exchange.、Um, That is necessary, you know.、Um, Mark Manson sort of did this amazing blog post a couple years ago called the four. I think it's called like the four weird questions you need to ask yourself when finding your life purpose. And one of those questions are, what shit sandwich are you willing to eat、uh, in your life to get to where you want to go? Because every choice, every decision, everything that you want in your life comes with a shit sandwich,、uh, and so you need to pick the shit sandwiches that you are willing to eat、uh, in a way that、um, has a nice exchange for you. And Know that none of it is perfect. It's never going to be exactly what you hoped for,、um, but you can make choices based on values, and you can make choices based on you're willing to sacrifice or give up something for the, you know,、um, goal of something else. So. For example, when I gave up my six-figure job, it was to give up security, is to give up that mortgage that I wanted, is to give up that traditional safety pension plan that I so wanted, you know, as a as a young adult.、Uh, and but what I wanted more was this sort of freedom to travel, freedom to work on things I like,、uh, and freedom to make choices in my life that I wanted to have. And so I was willing to、um, work three jobs for nine months, you know, to save up money for my escape, and I was. Willing to learn new things that required me to eat some humble pie and go. I don't know what I don't know, and I need to be a student again. And that was hard、uh, to digest sometimes. Being a perfectionist and someone that's worked really hard to get to a six-figure job, and then having to start from scratch again. I mean, my first year. I mean, I think I made twelve thousand dollars in my first year of consulting, which obviously you know was tough because I was living in Vancouver and I had to work a weekend job just to pay the bills. And that was the sacrifice, and I was willing to do. Um, and it wasn't really until my second year or two and a half years later from the first day I started my first business that I ended up making close to what I used to make before after taxes. You know, so this is the reality. You do need to put in the work, but setting that up. So one of the things I'm going to be talking about in the webinar are some.、Uh, and Carolyn, if you're still here listening,、uh, I know you're in between jobs right now. So one of the things that I'm going to be Talking about is some practical solutions of either if you're in a job,、uh, how to negotiate with your current employers, which I did, to go into a part-time role and a consulting role for them.、Uh, if you are、um, in a position of between jobs, you're you're either laid off or、um, you are finding a job、uh, that or your contract's about to end or something like that.、Um, I'm also going to be talking a lot about different resources、uh, online that you can find freelance gigs. You can uh, try uh, some consulting gigs. That you can experiment with certain skill sets that you have, and really learn how to be responsible for your earning potential. Because sometimes, getting laid off and not getting that contract renewed could be one of the best things that ever happened to you. Because it's now. In a way, forcing you to get out there and look for a job or look for a way of making a living on your own without the dependency of a, a traditional salary or a nine to five. So, Carolyn, yes, please. Okay, great. So you'll be hopefully coming on the webinar. Because I think that would be really, really great information for you.、Um, and what did you say? You're like, okay, so your your biggest sort of obstacle with your transition is that you feel behind.、Uh, that 
it's your backside you're seeing and I, and I need help getting out of my own way. Excellent. Uh, you know, we are, we all need help getting out of our own way. Uh, we are, we are our biggest obstacles. It's what we believe we can and can't do. I mean, Carolyn, I've been working with you in the 90 day launch for 90 days. Uh, and I've seen that transition, that growth for you already just by being around people who believe in your craft, who believe in an alternative um, uh, version of a future for you. And that belief in community, when community does that for you, as well as seeing the facts of what's possible, you know, outside of what you know, can absolutely change that trajectory of what you believe your future should be. Hey, Sharon. Hi from, oh, you're from Singapore. So hi from Lisbon. Hello to Singapore. <laughs> Uh, I love that um, lots of different people globally is, are here. And Krista, you're here as well. I think you just emailed me. i um, not sure where you're from, somewhere in the States, I think, perhaps. Um, thanks again for joining me. So anyway, um, I hope that uh, you guys do join me from uh, for the webinar next week. Again, the links are above. Uh, I'll put it again on the screen so that you see that. Um, but the live link will be above this video. Um, please come on the webinar. I love teaching uh, topics like this because not all of it is just about business building. A lot of it is about the human side of things, of change and transition, which is one of my favorite topics uh, to teach because in order for you to even be prepared to build a business and be open to learning new things, sometimes we have to get the human side of our mindset and our belief systems and our value systems ready for that change in order to accept really those plans and strategies that you can have uh, from your um, for your future. And again, uh, if you are looking for a bit of prep work, um, I have a new video blog out. Uh, that's the link there on screen as well as above the video you can click on, which I talk a little bit about the introduction to those five steps. Uh, and there's an invitation to the webinar there as well. So when you guys join me, we really will have a, a really live interaction. Uh, so not only will I teach uh, those five steps to mentally prepare you, you'll get a, a free uh, checklist workbook to help you follow those steps that we talked about on the webinar and you get some Q&A time with me. So I'm there to really help you and coach you on um, ensuring that you have some strategies uh, for your own transition because everybody's circumstance is different. Uh, none of there's no blueprint, you know, to the escape for anything. Um, that's why if you attend live or you submit your question beforehand, I will make sure to answer that uh, for you. Um, Carolyn, you said you've learned so much and you may not be ready for the launch, but you have new tools. Yeah, for sure. And that's it. That I, You know, Carolyn, one of the things that I love about you is that despite fear and despite sometimes the naggy, critical, um, you know, demons that we can all have inside our heads, you are always showing up, uh, you know, to listen and to participate. And I know that from obviously coaching you, but obviously every live stream I've ever ran, you're the first one in, which is awesome. Uh, but that attitude actually will get you so far, uh, Carolyn, and as well as anyone that's willing to persevere and get the help you need. Um, that is in itself a sense of uh, uh, giving yourself that worthiness, you know, saying yes to yourself by saying, hey, I may not know how to do it, but I'm willing to show up and learn and I'm willing to ask for the help that I require. And that is an act of self-love, you know, and that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about in the webinar is that this showing up for yourself, you know, I've always mentioned that uh, entrepreneurship or doing your own thing is almost like your first years, 10 years of therapy is really true. You know, entrepreneurship is not just about business. It really is about you taking a step forward and going, I want to make choices in my life. I want to do things according to my guiding light and my principles of how I want to live my life and do the work that I want to do. And that is an act of self-love, an act of kindness to yourself because you're no longer, um, believing that your life is dictated by other people, you know, and it's not di dictated by rules and regulations that can be uh, given to you by things like jobs or contracts, as Carolyn uh, so neat. Uh, so I've realized, you know, it's not, there's no job security anymore, you know, any time that can be pulled, uh, that, that rug can be lifted, you know, from your feet. And uh, we need to learn uh, independently on how to utilize our resources and utilize community and utilize technology in order to reach more uh, plans that we can have access to more than ever today. And so I hope that um, that's something that I can, some inspiration and message I can instill upon you uh, when we have the webinar next week. Uh, Sharon, you said that you need to attend the webinar for sure. Uh, if you can't make it, I know you work full time. Uh, there's a replay. So we will absolutely be sharing the replay link. Uh, but Sharon, also, if you if you sign up and you can attend, um, you can always email me uh, and let me know what questions you have about 
about your transition and I will make sure to answer that um, and, and do that live on the call and I'll record that for you and, and send that over. Okay, guys. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me. I hope uh, that conversation was uh, somewhat helpful uh, to prepare you for, you know, that that step of, of um, reaching your goals without comparing yourself to other people and really having a reality check on um, what are the practical steps and, and, and the mindset that you need to take when you make change and not to... Um, give yourself a hard time for trying to achieve something really major like other people when you're first starting out and actually to start where you are and just starting is great. Uh, but to be really mindful, you know, about what those next steps are. And hopefully that will get out more outlined for you uh, at that webinar. Um, and I hope you, for you to join me there. Okay. Thanks guys for seeing uh, the webinar. Uh, I will be live streaming again, I'm sure next week. So any topics that you would love for me to cover and dedicate to you, I'm happy to do. Um, I will be working from a Lisbon co-working space on Monday, very likely streaming from there. Uh, so any questions you have about Lisbon, uh, about travel, about um, the upcoming webinar, or just anything really that I can advise on for you, my um, I am of service to you. My butt is always for you. So just ask and you shall receive all the time. Okay. Thanks guys for supporting uh, this channel, supporting my work and always coming live with me. Uh, and thanks for joining me today. Bye from Lisbon.